Hello, welcome to Medical Update. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Rosen. It's estimated that over 5 million Americans suffer from chronic wounds, which can be the result from a large range of problems like diabetes, pressure ulcers, and vascular disease. Unfortunately, some sufferers have lost extremities because of non-healing wounds. Our experts today are specialists in the most advanced techniques used to preserve limbs. Dr. Peter Salzer is the medical director of hyperbaric and wound care medicine at Plainview's Hospital's Wound Healing Center. And Dr. Russell Caprioli is the chief of the section of podiatry in the Department of Surgery at LIJ Medical Center and North Shore University Hospital and part of their comprehensive wound healing center. Welcome, gentlemen. Well, thank you. Nice to be here. You know, wounds, people think, okay, well, if I've got a bed sore, if I've got a pressure ulcer, you put a Band-Aid on, put some ointment on, you're sort of done. But this is a very complex area of medicine, so much so that you actually have a wound care center. Can you, can you explain what that does? Yes. Um, most people, you know, uh, take it for granted that, you know, they develop a cut and it heals right away. The majority of our patients are diabetics. Uh, usually type 2 diabetics, the type that feel I'm not a real diabetic, they develop most of mm. the wounds. And where someone would develop a, a blister or a callus, in a diabetic that will continue to break down usually and form a sore. Once the skin has opened, bacteria gets in. If it gets into the bone, it could be limb-threatening or even life-threatening. So, so diabetes, you, you would say, is the biggest player for these very significant wounds? By far. Yes, and I, and I agree with that. Most of, uh, well, not most of, but at least 30% of the patients that we see at North Shore Plainview have wounds which are related in some way or another to diabetes. We have a stat up on the screen that says right. that diabetic foot ulcers account for 24%, 24%, a quarter of all diabetic admissions? I would say that's, and that's growing because the number of diabetics in America is expanding tremendously, even, even with children. But yes, um, most people who are admitted to the hospital is some type of wound related and very often lower extremity due to pressure from shoe gear and uh, lack of feeling in the feet, which is a, a major cause of ulceration in diabetics, as well as lack of circulation. And yeah. that's where the right. our, our population has not only diabetes, but since they're elderly, they have poor circulation from hardening of the arteries, which is a very common condition. So when we are presented with a patient who has a ulcer or a wound that hasn't been healing for longer than the standard period of time, several weeks to four weeks at the most, our obligation is to find out why it's not healing. Is there inadequate blood supply? Is there infection? Is there underlying disease in the bone? And we begin that investigation. If we find that there's inadequate blood supply, the first thing we do is to get a vascular evaluation and consultation by a vascular surgeon who may be able to do something to improve the blood supply. If that's possible, that will help the wound to heal a great deal of the time. If it's not, we have many other things in our armamentarium that we can do to help. There are several types of diabetic foot surgeries. Yes. Um, well, diabetics, a very important part of this would be prophylactic or preventative type of diabetic care. So it is important that all diabetics, you know, see their podiatrist, they're screened at least for the circulation, for lack of feeling, and also for bony prominences where a simple bunion or a toe that protrudes that would rub in shoe gear is potential for a wound or amputation. So we do a great deal of preventative surgery if we see that's going to be a problem. And then we have lots of very uh, modern new modalities of wound care products. We have living skin equivalents. We have lots of modern things that the wound center offers that may not be offered in the general office. The, the, I just want to interject that in the past, and when I say the past, maybe up until 15 or 20 years ago, wound treatment was based on placing a dressing on the wound and let the patient heal. Right. Well, that's no longer the case. There have been tremendous uh, developments and advancements in research, and we now have products available to us and to the patient which stimulate healing, which cause the patient to heal by conveying the quote-unquote healing factors. And as was pointed out, there's an artificial product made in the laboratory that's uh, like normal skin, and it carries healing factors to the patient, and you place it on the wound, and those healing factors are released and stimulate the patient's repair. I, I remember way back when, when I was, I was in training, we would, on the internal medicine service, we would call the wound service, they'd put some cream on, 
they'd put a bandage on, and with time, you'd actually watch the wound just get worse and worse See, and worse. That's where the wound center is different, and that's where wound care has evolved. Because it, I always say it's not what you put on the wound. You know, it's what you take off the wound. Are you removing the pressure that's causing the wound? Are you bringing the circulation back? You know, I, another thing we say is, you know, vascular is our, are the plumbers. Without blood, nothing heals. So if we can't get blood there, all this fancy stuff that we have doesn't work. So the first thing is to assess circulation. And this is where the wound centers that are available through the health system have the advantage of having hyperbaric, where yeah, some people are not bypassable. Right. And you, you mentioned something which is interesting. Without circulation, wounds don't heal, was your statement. And we have many patients who have very poor circulation. They've been investigated by the vascular surgeon. There's nothing to do from the vascular surgeon point of view to improve the circulation. They have very little blood going to the leg. So that's the patient without circulation. We can help that patient with hyperbaric oxygen, which is the patient goes in a special chamber where they're receiving 100% oxygen rather than 21%. Which, which is what's in our ambient right. environmental air. That's right, we're all breathing now and we're breathing it under ambient pressure. You used a very good word there. Uh, but when you go into the chamber, the pressure is higher. And if you measure the oxygen in your bloodstream, it's 1,500 compared to what ours is now, which is 100. So you can have a very small amount of actual circulation and still have a very high amount of oxygen arriving at the wound. And in spite of failure of all the all other modalities like these artificial things and the offloading hyperbaric can result in healing so l let's get into that just for one more moment um, you're talking about uh, a term we use in medicine called oxygen delivery yes. so all of our tissues need oxygen right um, mm -hmm. to to survive to live to grow and you're saying that with a closed down vessel there's just not enough blood going and the blood is what carries the oxygen so you're basically shoving under high pressure completely purified oxygen it's sort of like you turn the volume up to max right, right. there was a study done in the hyperbaric medicine in which uh, animals were uh, all of the blood was removed from the animals and replaced with uh, saline then they were put in hyperbaric chambers and their blood oxygen level was 1500 because the the oxygen was dissolved in the liquid it wasn't attached to the red cells like it is ordinarily and those animals lived and so you can live on the oxygen dissolved in the liquid portion of the blood now that's an extreme it's not what we have with human beings there's always some blood arriving to the ulcer mm -hmm. but we're going to increase the uh, oxygen level from 20 to 1000 in those patients who would not be candidates for any wound care once they're in the chamber then both services work symbiotically that they're, as they're delivered the oxygen, they're getting wound care at the same time. And many of the modalities that we do, and even the surgeries that wouldn't heal, will now heal once the patient goes into the chamber. So uh, the combination is really, uh, it's made great strides in, in limb preservation right. and, that limb, and saving right. people's limbs. Right. So the oxygen delivery is then normalized, yes. or close to normalized. Right, for, for a period of time. And patients go into the hyperbaric chamber two hours a day. We, we have a Every, picture of that. I don't know if we right. put it up on the screen. Yes. Yeah. This is a typical hyperbaric chamber. Uh, there are two varieties, one which will accommodate one person and one which will accommodate anywhere between two and ten people at the same time. This is the type that we use and is most common throughout the United States. And wh while they're in this chamber, the pressure is adjusted, they get 100% oxygen, flows into the chamber, and they get a blood oxygen level of 1500 for a short period of time. Plus they're watching TV or a movie. It's yeah. not an unpleasant experience right. providing they're not too claustrophobic right. and it's glass. So right. it's... Uh, and, and in this case, well oxygen is, is functioning as a medication and it has multiple uh, physiological effects on the healing. And like any medication, you can have too much of a good thing. And there can be side effects. You know, oxygen toxicity has various side effects in the brain and the lungs so you would say well if you keep them in there for two hours why don't you do it for three days consecutively well you can't two hours every day two hours every day you keep coming back we, we, we've had some we have some pictures of, of some wounds we've shown we've shown a couple I believe but if we could put another picture of one of the wounds up uh, on the screen so 
a wound such as this, how long does it take? How many treatments of hyperbaric oxygen? And then what else do you need to correct this issue? Well, again, working together as a team, this actually, this wound was caused by a burn, dropping hot water on the foot while cooking barefoot. And then once the wound is stabilized, and uh, in, the, in this particular case, this person has adequate circulation, it's still a very severe wound. And then years pass before some of the new modalities, this probably would have gone on to even amputation because those white strings that we see are the tendons that move the toes. Because we can keep those alive and moist and in an oxygenated environment, they can go on to healing such as this. Now, a person without circulation with that type of wound, hyperbaric has and, and can cause these type of results, which, which didn't happen prior to that type of modality. And again, how many treatments would you need? Well, the average number of treatments for all of our patients, which is a lot of various diseases, uh, is about 32. Uh, so five times a week, six weeks, and they come every day. We're open on Saturday. We offer that opportunity to speed things up. If you need 30 treatments and you do it six times a week, it's five weeks. If you need, you know, again, if you do it five times a week, it's six weeks. So it's up to the individual. But we encourage them to come every day. Not every hospital has a wound care center, and not every hospital has hyperbaric chambers, correct? Correct. When I first became involved in uh, wound care, rather than what I used to do, which was uh, surgery, there were very few wound care centers. There were still a lot of people who had wounds. The same number of people. Actually, there are more now. But there wasn't the attention put on it. But the number of wound care centers is growing, and it will continue to grow. And in the North Shore system, there's Franklin, there's North Shore LIJ, and Plainview, correct? And uh, Southside, and I believe um, one in Queens. As far as Hills. As far as Hills. As far as Hills, possibly, right. yes. Right. What do you want patients to know who may have diabetes but have never had? A diabetic ulcer, what, what should they be thinking about and worrying about, and should they be worrying? I think every diabetic patient and every diabetic foot is potentially a, a wound. And um, good preventative care, taking their feet seriously, going for uh, podiatric screenings two or three times a year, just basic hygiene, not, you know, soaking your feet in hot water, realizing that you are losing the feeling in your feet. There's no protective mechanism. You know, a child who touches a hot stove doesn't do it anymore. But our patients repetitively do the same damaging uh, uh, treatments or uh, shoe gear and things that to injure their feet over and over again. So in those people where we had just no way of salvaging these feet, we now have another uh, alternative with hyperbaric that gives us kind of like another second life. The patient and their family, their spouse or whomever, is the best uh, way to observe their feet. Every day, you take Every your socks you off, your socks you look your feet, yeah. especially since they don't feel well. And some of them will have an injury, uh, you know, a cut or whatever. It'll go on for days and days and days. They must look at their feet every day. That's the best. You know, it's analogous to like advice. cancer. Right. People let it go too long. And they were afraid they were going to do something, and then they, they almost have to do something right. more right. Right. involved. Dr. Peter Salzer, right. Dr. Russell Capriola, thank you. thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. We'll be right back after this break.